First come the earth, you got to take care of it. And then come the people, then each his fair share of it. Design for the earth, and you design for yourself. Help design a world better for you and everybody else. Now we're working on a farm on the edge of possibility. This is the edge of what can be done. Good morning. My name is Tom Ward. I'm a permaculture counselor. I help people design their landscape. This is Wolf Gulch Farm, and the family at Wolf Gulch, the Powells and I, put this place together starting in the late 90s, 1999. And this is the Siskiyou Mountains. And that back ridge, Dutchman's Peak, the Pacific Crest Trail runs along it, is at about 42 degrees latitude. It's the Oregon-California border. And we're standing here at about 2,600 feet elevation. And right now, we're looking at what was done about uh, 12 years ago when we built this place. And now we have an operating farm. Um, it mostly grows seed crops and CSA vegetables and feeds the people who live on the farm. And the whole thing is laid out in key line principles, which is an Australian method of, of soil management and of water management and of looking at the landscape for its patterns. And we're now going to go for a tour and look at this system. Well, here we are at the takeout point. We call this the spring. This white pipe feeds everything. And this watershed above us runs a mile or more up to the ridge and has lots of different heads. It's way more than a square mile. And the water just sinks in and sinks in all the time. And at last it comes up. And right now we've got water running. This is a system that mostly runs underground, this creek, this gulch. And here it's at the surface and we're skimming. We're just taking some water off the top of a bigger flow. And you can see that we've got water. Check out this cottonwood tree. This is the barn pond, we call it. And it's exclusively fed from the roof of this barn with these downspouts. It's also water that's at the top of our agricultural system. So it means moving water out of here down into the greenhouses or down into other systems is fairly straightforward. This is an open place in the pipe system that runs over to the Egyptian. I call it an observation port. I think it's really important to have locations where you can see how your water is flowing and how much water is flowing. And so the spring, which is up in the main gulch here, which is the first place water appears on the surface in the spring, is where our takeout is. And basically a pipe runs all the way to this pond. And this pond is basically a big transfer box. It's called the Egyptian, because we really admire how the Egyptians really got their stuff together. So we're honoring them here. And then from here, we have a big overflow pipe, as well as the spillway, that goes down and is buried and feeds all these different drip irrigation systems and all these different fields. So this is kind of the heart of our system. And then we had to line these ponds, even though it's good adobe uh, clay, because the water situation got so dire. And this pond liner allowed us to survive the drought and keep farming. There's a valve on a big six inch line right here. And that valve is at the end of a pipeline that runs up to the Egyptian pond. So that's a dam face. Now I'm standing in a key line canal. This key line canal is for flood irrigating these production fields. You put, you put a flag in, it's called, which is a temporary dam made out of fabric. And then the water you release out of that big valve comes roaring down in this big open ditch and then flows gently over the edge of the ditch and saturates the ground, sinking into the ripping lines that we made with that plow. And this is a key line plow. And it has big, deep shanks. So calling it a plow 
It's more of a subsoil ripper. In this field that I'm walking into now, this is a green manure field. This is how we do absorption of carbon into the soil because all of this will be filled in and will act like composting on site. And here we are moving over into a major hedgerow. Without these hedgerows, even with our careful irrigation, this whole landscape would dry out in a hurry. During the day, dry hot winds roar up through this farm. At night, cool breezes come down through. The cool breezes sink and are channeled by these key line irrigation canals. And then the coldest air is drained off instead of through the crops. So there are some advantages to mountain farming that have to do with drainage, that have to do with pressure in your water system. In back of me is the herb garden. The vineyard over here, these two locations are in the hottest part of this whole valley. Well, this is west. Here's southwest. This is a southwest facing slope. And then over on this slope over here is almost the opposite of the grapes and the herbs. You've got a northwest facing slope. It's cooler. It stays cool in the morning. And that's going to be a fruit orchard. You can see where the mulch is down to protect the new trees that have been put in. Up on this slope, in between these big long swales are winter grain terraces, dry land farming. And just below each of the swales are lines of walnut trees. So this is agroforestry in the making. And we're able to irrigate those crops because of the Egyptian, because these are still below the height that the Egyptian pond is at. And we can run drip irrigation over to all these trees we're establishing. This pond, the red shale pond, it's right now pretty much full. And it is almost 12 foot deep, 14, 12 foot deep. It holds a lot of water. This is what I call a heroic pond, especially when we put a pond liner in it. When we first built this pond, we did test pits. We found good clay, but when we got the bulldozers in, we hit rock at the far end of this pond and that rock turned out to leak, even though we patched it with clay. So we ended up putting in a big pond liner. This is an awesome swimming pond, and the kids are down here all the time. That's the main valve array, a great big eight inch pipe that runs straight through the dam into the pond. And then below this pond is our best production fields. These are the fields that have really been in high production. We've got water for sure through the whole season because of this giant reservoir. And we've got really good pressure. And this whole thing is also laid out on key line. Everything collects cold air and collects storm water. And all these systems eventually are collected and flow out of our farm fields down next to the end of this granary line of black oaks. But down there in the bottom of Wolf Gulch, you see the face of a dam, which we call the maple dam because there's maples in back of it. That is a giant dry pond that only fills in a flood year. And it is our silt trap. And everything past that is downstream into the Little Applegate River and then down the Little Applegate River into the Applegate River, and down the Applegate River past Grants Pass into the Rogue River, and then ultimately out to the Pacific Ocean. These river systems coming out of these incredibly complicated geological formations of the Siskiyous, and this is our life. We're keeping it as pristine as possible, hoping that someday the salmon will return and fertility will return to this landscape. So there's a really big picture. Farming on the edge. We're having fun. And we love what we're doing. And isn't it beautiful? Check it out. Glory.
keeps us happy. Nice to meet you.